So hello everyone, my name is Martin Reck. I'm working at the Lungen Clinic in Northern Germany. I'm specialized on thoracic oncology and it's my pleasure to talk to you about the results and the background of the Checkmate Nanale, a new treatment opportunity for patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. Well, the background has been the observation that the immunotherapy combination of two different checkpoint inhibitors, the anti-PD-1 inhibitor, nivolumab and the anti-CDL4 inhibitor ipilimumab had as the, the uh, ability to generate a long-term overall survival benefit in several tumors. We also have seen in the Checkmate 2 to 7 trial that this combination was associated with a survival benefit, in particular a long-term survival benefit compared to chemotherapy independent from our biomarkers, pd one expression status, and tumor mutation and burden. The idea of the Checkmate 9LA was the control of the fast tumor progression by adding two cycles of chemotherapy to the immunotherapy combination and to build on the survival benefit which has been generated by the use of nivolumab and ipilimumab. So the concept was the comparison between a short chemotherapy to cycles of chemotherapy in combination with the immunotherapy combination of nivolumab and ipilimumab compared to standard chemotherapy. The primary endpoint was overall survival and secondary endpoints, which were tested hierarchically, were response, progression-free survival and efficacy correlated to the pdl one expression status. The data monitoring committee confirmed a superiority for the primary endpoint of overall survival in a pre-specified interim analysis corresponding to hazard ratio of 0.69. With a four months further follow-up, uh, consolidation and improvement of overall survival was seen now corresponding to a hazard ratio of 0.65. We, ha we observed the very early separation of the Kaplan-Meier curves, and as mentioned before, we did observe a consistent benefit in overall survival. Still, we do have a lot of patients in censoring, so we do expect a further improvement of the outcomes with the follow-up in the next years. As lined out in the statistical plan, progression fee survival and response were tested hierarchically. Also, a significant improvement in response and progression fee survival was observed in favor of the combination arm. When we look on response, interestingly, the rate of primary progressions was reduced in the combination arm, underlining the concept of the control of the early progression of the disease. When we talk about the benefit related to the different patient characteristic, the benefit in survival and progression-free survival was seen dominantly in most investigated subgroups. In particular, when we look on the stratification factors, these were histology and pd one expression status. The benefit and efficacy was seen in both major histologies, non-squamous and squamous cell histology, and it was seen independent from the PDL1 expression status in patients with PDL1 negative as well as PDL1 positive tumors. One important question was the question of tolerability because we have a very intensive treatment for our patients. We did observe a higher number of adverse events leading to discontinuation of one of the agents. And we also did observe a higher frequency of grade three and four treatment-related adverse events in the combination arm. On the other hand, also treatment duration was longer in the combination arm because the patients received a maintenance therapy with the immunotherapy combination and the rate of fatal toxicities was very low in both arms with 2%. Interestingly, the frequency of typical chemotherapy-associated adverse events like anemia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia was reduced in the combination arm, probably due to the fact that the patients only have received two cycles of chemotherapy. And the picture and the severity of immunotherapy-associated adverse events was very similar to the picture that we have seen in the Checkmate 2 to 7, 
So there were no new immunotherapy associated adverse events in the combination arm with the chemotherapy. So in conclusion, the Checkmate 9 la met its primary endpoint of a significant improvement in overall survival in the pre-specified interim analysis. A confirmation in all endpoints was seen with a four month for further follow up. The tolerability profile was as expected. There were no new safety signals observed in this trial and the efficacy was independent from certain patient's characteristics like histology or pd one expression status. So currently this combination has been already approved by the FDA and I think it represents a very attractive new therapy opportunity for untreated patients with advanced non small cell lung cancer without oncogenic alterations. Thank you.